everyone, what is going on? My name is Red Archer Live, and welcome back to the channel. In today's Payday 2 video, I'm going to be showing you my favourite build of all time in Payday 2. It's the one that I use all the time in all my gameplay, in all my video essays, live streams, anything Payday related. If it's not a stealth gameplay in the background, chances are it's gameplay using this build. It's actually a retake of a build I did quite a long time ago called the buffed LNG build. It's been updated and changed a little bit since, and I wanted to show it to you all because I get loads of comments to this day asking me, what is my build? How do I get those skills you've got? How does it work? What guns are you using? And I want to answer all those questions today in this build tutorial video. Before we go any further, I just want to say very quickly, this is a build designed for PC, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One. The only reason I'm choosing PC to record this is A, because of the frame rate, it's double the frame rate, makes the video look smoother, and B, because I really want to show off my TARDIS mod background, which by the way, if you haven't seen, you can actually download in the link in the description for your PC Payday 2. If you want to have a TARDIS background, you can have loads of different effects in the background. It's a really cool mod that I actually built myself, and I'm really proud of it, so if you want to get that too, feel free to have a look at that, but I can also show that off as well. But before before we go any further, have you heard about a little known thing called Red Archer Live's Discord server? Bet you thought that was going somewhere else, didn't you? Well, in case you didn't know, the channel has its own Discord server. It's been around for quite a long time, but only recently have I given it some proper attention, some love, and some character to make it a unique, professional, and fantastically loving server that we talk about all things Payday and beyond. There's a great deal of different channels there. You can assign yourself all different roles for your interests, the platforms you play on, and so much more than that. If you're interested in joining the server, getting a chance to talk to me, talk to everyone else on the channel, Channel, then feel free to hop in and join. The link is in the description and on screen now. There are loads of different things you can do, including a special role for patrons. So if you support me over on the Patreon page, which will be getting some more love very soon as well, you will get an exclusive patron role in the Discord, get access to a special patrons channel where you could talk to me directly. Hope you enjoy the server. Hope you all check it out. But anyway, let's get on with the video. So without any further ado, let's get into the video and show you the build tutorial. But first off, you know the drill by now. Let's roll the intro. So I've named this profile very lovingly as Speedy Pew Pew, and that about sums up how this build works. It's a run and gun, full auto weapons build, which is best designed to be used with LMGs, assault rifles, and submachine guns. I wouldn't advise akimbo primary submachine guns, only because there's not enough skills to cater to those. If you want to use them, you could rejig some skill points to make it work, but personally, I wouldn't advise it. I think it best benefits from the use of light machine guns in primary and submachine guns in secondary. So you can use any light machine gun on PC, PS4 and Xbox, go for any light machine gun on there that you've got, which is any of the ones on offer apart from the new M60, which is only on PC. But honestly, any light machine gun works here. I personally have found the KSP and the RPK as well as the Buzzsaw to work really well. And then also the M60, which just come out, also works really well as well. I think personally, if you want a good fire rate, and there will be an argument I'll make for this later on, I think I would almost lean towards the buzzsaw, to be honest, but we'll talk about that a little bit later in the video. And as for secondaries, like I said, submachine guns, I really like using the Tatonka submachine gun. I just think it works really well. But let's move into the skills and talk about how this build works. So as you can see, I'm going to go through all the different skills you can see on screen now and just pick out the key ones, because what I used to do was talk about every single skill. There's no real point. I think the real focus here is emphasizing the key things that you really need to make this build work. So I'm going to flick through each of the pages first. You can just pause if you want to take any pictures and just have a look at where the skills are and just allocate them yourself. You can go ahead and do that. But then I'm going to explain some key points for this build. And so there are all five pages. So for me, if you're new to this channel, any La build video I make, it always has nine lives and swan song ace. It's a ritual. I just love those skills. Being able to down one more time before going to custody and also having swan song, it makes a loud build work so, so, so much better. And especially with a light machine gun, when you get hit by swan song and you are about to die, you can infinitely spray it for nine seconds and it does a lot of damage. LMGs are pretty damn powerful and it works really well here. And then Mastermind, Inspire is a vital skill as well. For almost any loud build, really, if you can't get Inspire into your loud build, you probably are worth putting it in the bin, to be honest with you. And then also we've got fully loaded Ace as well as ammo bag skills because I really like the self-sufficient like I said, this is a build where you're designed to work on your own as well as with a team. The ammo pickup makes it much better for both the guns you're using. You can run off without any ammo bags completely if you want to go on your own. Or if your teammates all want to bring medic bags, that way you don't have to worry about your own ammo counts. Of course, that would put other players in jeopardy, but that's down to them to sort that out in your team. I've then also managed to get jack of all trades. And the reason for this is I'm very much a big fan of on the go deciding which of the resources are more important. Is it doctor bags or is it ammo bags? And in this build, you've got two ammo bags or two doctor bags. And so on the go, I can say, right, you know what? I'm going to have two doctor bags and one ammo bag. 
or I can flip it round. I can have two ammo bags and one doctor bag. Or if you feel particularly fancy and, you know, maybe you want to bring a primary of ammo bags and bring in some first aid kits, something, mix it up. Obviously, you haven't got skills for that, but it's something you could do, in fairness. But personally, I tend to run with two doctor bags and an ammo bag because, again, your pickup is really good. You don't really need the ammunition. That would be handy for your other teammates because, really, if you can't run off the ammo yourself with this build, you're probably in a bit of trouble, to be honest. What really makes this build special, though, is the Ace Body Expertise, as well as the Ace Surefire and Basic Lock and Load. It's the really powerful full auto skills that you need, being able to hit fire them, being able to pierce through body armor, and also get more bullets in the magazine. And then the key one here, and that's what makes it stand out for me, 90% of the bonus headshot damage that you would get from shooting an enemy in the head is just applied to the body. So you get almost the exact same headshot damage on a cop wherever you shoot them. You probably know how this skill works. And for me, as somebody who doesn't play Payday 2 every single day the way I used to, you know, I play it sometimes once a week, sometimes a bit more often than that, sometimes a bit less often. This build allows me to just stroll in, shoot cops wherever I like. Obviously, bulldozers are an exception, but that's separate and you know how to deal with those. But I can shoot cops wherever and it would not be a problem. Just instantly, bam, killed them no matter where I've shot. And it works really well and it makes it a hell of a lot easier for me. Beyond that, some very basic skills. Like I said, I'm not going to break them all down. I really like basic second wind and ace parkour. They work really well. And on top of that, I just got a bit of extra points here spent in riflemen just so you can aim a bit faster. What I will say though is before we move on to anything else, there is a slight variation I sometimes make on this build where I get rid of these skills as well as the ace on parkour and I get drill skills. It very much depends on the heist I'm playing and whether I need the drill skills, but that's where I'd assign them if you feel the need to. I want to put that in here because sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't, and that is the only slight variation in this build, so I just want to make that clear for anyone who was wondering. Let's look next at the perk deck, and I've chosen Grinder for this. For those of you who don't know how Grinder works, quite simply, every time you deal damage to an enemy, you get health back and it heals over time. If you keep dealing damage to enemies, you get your health back very, very quickly. And it's a comment I still get a lot about, how is your health just regenerating that quickly? This is why, because if you combine this with a very fast firing light machine gun, it makes it work really well. And you get a lot of life back quickly. It does need the Sokol character pack. So if you don't own that, I understand this could be a bit more of an issue. Maybe you could look towards using the Rogue perk deck. But for me, I think Grinder works perfectly with this build. Beyond that, like I've said, we talked about the deployables. Armor, I tend to use the two-piece suit. You can only use the two-piece suit or the lightweight ballistic vest when you're working with Grinder, so it really depends on your preference. Finally, when it comes to the crew boost that I pick, I tend to go for healer, I go for reinforcer, and I also go for accelerator. Really, honestly, it depends on what you prefer, but I think having extra health, being able to heal health every five seconds, regardless of the Grinder perk deck, and on top of that, reloading and swapping weapons faster. You could make arguments towards the more stamina and armor speed penalty being reduced also. That one's up to you. Okay, so that breaks down the entire build. Let's now go into some gameplay, and I'll share my final thoughts on this build as a whole. And here we are with the gameplay for my full auto weapon builds. This is, like I said, my favorite build I've ever made in Payday 2. I think it works fantastically well. And as someone who's made quite a lot of build tutorials in the past, you know, certain builds stand out to me. And this has always been the one that I enjoyed going back to and using in my general gameplay and just generally having a good time in Payday 2. It just works really well for me. So let's talk a little bit about the pros and cons of this build. First off, the pros. You can run this if you're on your own or with teammates. Now I know Payday 2 is a co-op first person shooter, but either sometimes A, people like playing offline sometimes, like myself included, I like playing with the AI sometimes. It's a nice little mix on the dynamic. B, some people don't have friends to play with. It sounds sad, but it's true. You know, you could be playing Payday 2 on your own. I find I could be doing that sometimes because a lot of my personal friends don't really play the game as much anymore. And also just generally, some people cannot play online, so they have to play on their own. And that's why these kind of builds are so good. They work so well because they cater for those kinds of people. But on top of that, it provides something for the team as well. You know, there's skills like Second Wind, as well as being able to bring whatever medic bags or armor bags you think your team will need. You know, you can support yourself and yet still cater to the other team members. So really, if you play by yourself or with others, you've got a really good build here, a really strong build that means you could be a key team player and not be lagging behind compared to everyone else with all their builds. It just works fantastically well. Now, as you can see in the gameplay, I chose to use the Buzzsaw despite holding the KSP in my weapon loadout. The reason for that is I want to demonstrate the point I mentioned earlier in the video. Now, as I said, every time you deal damage with the grinder perk deck, you get health back. So reasonably, what it would make sense to say is that whenever you use a weapon with a faster rate of fire, you're dealing damage quicker, you're getting health back quicker. So if you can land the shots with the Buzzsaw on the cops faster, in my opinion, it works better for the health regeneration. And the difference is actually quite notable. The rate of fire on most LMGs in this game is between 500 and 700, roughly whereas the buzz source rate of fire is 1200 and it does create a point for the m60 which is only on pc because that has a rate of fire of 550 
which is the lowest rate of fire in any of the LMGs. So you could wager this might be one of the worst LMGs to use. But if you can land the hits with a slower rate of fire, you know, you could make it work because the damage is a lot higher to compensate. So really, it doesn't matter which LMG you pick. I just personally think that for the sake of the grinder healing, it's probably worth considering the buzzsaw first. But it's genuinely up to you. I don't really think you're at much of a disadvantage whichever one you pick. I've been sat here trying to think of cons for this build. And to be honest, there aren't a great deal I can come up with. I really like the way this flows out and it has skills for both meds and ammo. The survivability here, it works really well. I think maybe because you've got a lot of the really high skills in this build, you've gone for some really high tier skills. Some of the lower tier ones, you know, like Force Friendship, like Jokers, things like that, you can't get with this build unless you do some serious rejigging with the skill points. That may bother you more than it does me. But generally, I don't think there's a lot to criticize this build for, and that's just my opinion. But of course, as always, I know you guys will sometimes spot things that are both good and bad about these builds that I haven't seen before and I really do appreciate hearing the criticisms and also the compliments towards the things that I come up with in the comments section below. And I suppose the assault rifles are perhaps a little bit shunned in this build. Like I said, you can use them but I feel they suffer when you compare to LMGs. If you could pick an assault rifle with a DMR kit attachment that has a decent ammo pickup that's helped also by the fully loaded skill, you might be able to make an assault rifle work with some pretty high damage and a decent rate of fire but it just feels like a lot of screwing around to get a really good damage high fire rate gun when really the LMGs just sat right there and after they got buffed with the Reservoir Dogs update a few years ago they've just been a fantastic weapon class to go for. I think they stand out over assault rifles personally. I don't really see a reason to switch to anything else. I just don't. In this build I think LMGs just work the best but if you like assault rifles you may find that this build is not quite as strong with those but I still think you can make it work if you try hard enough and get the right combination of guns, attachments and skills. But that pretty much sums up all I've got to say about this build. Generally there's not a lot to talk about here apart from those key points that I just mentioned so I'm going to leave it there. So as always I'd really like to know what you think about this build and the things that you think are good bad about it how you would improve it how you might change it let me know all your feedback down below because i really will appreciate hearing what you've got to say and if you have enjoyed this video as always you know what to do leave a like on the video to show your support and subscribe if you are new because it's quick it's free and i'll always love you for doing so and finally if you do want to support me over on patreon as always a link is in the description to that donations are never expected but they're always appreciated and will always help support myself and the channel to just keep things going keep things running smoothly and keep bringing more content out for you guys i'll be back with a brand new video hopefully later this weekend I really want to make a video on the Avengers game and I hope that people that watch it give it a chance because I know I usually do Payday 2 content and I'm not changing that but I'm trying to experiment and see if there's other games as well as Payday people might like to watch so if that video drops this weekend which I'm planning to then you know give it a chance see what you think it'll be a very similar style to my Payday 2 news videos just about a different game so until then thank you all very much for watching I will see you all next time with a brand new video until then look after yourselves take it easy and I'll see you all soon